guys good morning good afternoon good evening from wherever you are watching me from um and welcome back to my channel if you're a new subscriber welcome welcome to my channel if you're a returning subscriber welcome so my name is chica as you all know so today i'll be showing you guys all the things i saw at the museum so this is isinri museum in enugupu anambra state so stay tuned so when i got to the museum um and this is the man that attended to me here he's just um giving me a brief history of the museum so apparently the museum is located at the palace of the father of enugupu called um obala anakana okabia nri <laughs> i'll take it again obala anakana okabia nri so the museum itself was built by the collective efforts of all Enwuku indigenes. So I must say this is a very brilliant idea to erect this edifice that houses all these things that um educate people because trust me, a lot of things here you would see and your jaws will drop because this is something you've not even seen before this is something you've not even heard about before so yeah i think it, this is a very very brilliant brilliant idea and i commend the people of this um community for this so here he was just giving me a brief history of enuguku and I'm trying to jot the points down in my phone because I didn't go there with my pen and paper. So, yeah. Here, I'm trying to use my phone to jot things down. And I think I did a good job. So, yeah, we'll be moving into the museum proper now. So, he's trying to explain the museum has different departments blah blah so this is the first department um this is the royalty department it's just like a palace and here you'll find a lot lot of things that you see on a normal palace on a normal day so this is the nzu the ibos call this nzu so um this is a symbol of purity and love so when a when you present nzu to a visitor it's an indication that the visitor is very much welcomed so this is the four deities representing the four market days of Igbo land on war eke ore and afo yes so this is the um members of the iwe cabinet of Enugu the dynamic culture of Enugu. So these are just the decision makers of Enugu. All of them are housed in this picture, dressed in their different beautiful, beautiful attires. So yeah, as I, as usual, I was jotting things down and listening attentively. So um, he was trying to mention their names on um, yeah. So this is the Oche Ogaranya. So in the olden days, this is the strong room where the rich men keep their money, keep their valuable items, you know. So he's just trying to say here that in the olden days, the women and men do not sleep in the same room. So women do not spoil the potency of the man's charm. <laughs> It's actually funny, Jerry. Whatever this means, trust me to ask a lot of questions, though. So this right here is the Oche Eze, the king's seat. So this other colorful one is the Unkata, worn by the cabinet members. As you can see from these pictures, some of them are wearing the Unkata thing. So yeah. So the next one is the abanwefi so this one is from these leaves when i'm okay like he said so when they walk the bell rings and the bell is an indication to give way otherwise this charm might make you pass out so yeah this is the bell he was touch trying to touch the bell here so everybody gives way once they hear this bell ring so if you do not give way you pass out they have a lot of strong strong juju in this bag so what is making you pass out when you don't give away is actually the potency of the juju <laughs> so yeah the next is the 
Mbu Agarega. So this is a symbol of authority for the other title holders. So yeah, it's just only the other title holders that use this um, Mbu Agarega. So when they walk, they use it as um, their stick. <laughs> So, um, moving on to the next is the hand fan. So, everybody that owns this fan would have their title inscribed on theirs. So, this particular one is for the Odenibo, one of Igbo land. So, every other person, depending on your title, as one of Ekulobia. Um, you know all of those big big titles so you just inscribe your own on your hand fan so moving on the next is this is a highly respected man because he did what he was called Ibuichi so apparently Ichi is a qualification mark and is a very big title in Igbo land. So basically this title, these marks, sorry, are given on the face. It's a very sharp knife-like object. So um, here this titled man is trying to break cola knot. As you can see the cola knot on his hand. So he's trying to break the cola knot. Um, this is actually a very big man because not everybody that does the witchy thing survives. So anybody that does it and survives is actually very respected. So this one um, has, um, on, on his other hand, he has the offer, which is a symbol of authority, equity, and good conscience. So this particular man says only but the truth. Everything he says is the truth. So um, I don't know if he lies. Maybe he would die or something. I don't know. But according to this man, this particular man says only but the truth. So people that did Ibuichi, Ibuichi, sorry, do not tell lies. So here I was trying to ask him if this is still the case presently. And he answered, yes. <laughs> Look at my face. So this is the awkward um, where you put the cola knot. So after this man must have blessed the cola knot, he puts it there. So this is the maichi. This thing that he's holding is the maichi. It's very, very sharp. Um, Actually, like I mentioned earlier, and they use it in cutting some parts of the face. So here I was trying to point out that some parts of the face actually have nerve endings, like this portion of the eyes. So what happens? Do people die in the process of ibuichi? And he answered yes, that it which is not for everybody and only the brave survives it. So he was also explaining here that when they are making these marks with this sharp knife, apparently blood will be gushing out. So if someone else stays by the side to apply hot water mixed with activated charcoal on the portions where the blood is coming out from. Again, like I said earlier, sadly, not everybody survives this. So, yeah. Let's move on. This man did a lot of explanations. I just did this. I just summarized everything he said to you guys. I just summarized everything he said to you guys. Um, can we just continue? Oh, good. <laughs> um. I must commend this man though because yeah as much as he annoyed me in the beginning he actually did a good job explaining all these things to me yup so let's move on okay so this is the mpok fee it's used in drinking um palm wine so after breaking your cola knot you drink your palm wine so this one that he just touched is the sign of loyalty in a titled man's compound so it's um, normally owned by other titled men so every other titled man has this so this one he's he's pointing at is also a sign of royalty in a palace or a very 
big titled man's place. So this is the chief judge in the olden days. This is this is his offer and this is his two-edged sword. The two-edged sword is a symbol of truthfulness, no matter whose case he is judging. So, um, apparently, this person is not supposed to tell lies to, as a chief judge, um, you say the truth, nothing but the truth at all times. So, yeah, so this is the errand boy in the palace. He is always, always stuck naked. He must not be found wearing clothes. I think I asked him why. Why should anybody be stuck naked? So he said it signifies innocence, right? So it signifies innocence. But the boy is normally a teenager, not a grown man. So yeah, he's always stuck naked. So these are the um, red caps for titled men. Different grades of red cap for different levels of titled men. This one he's pointing at is normally for other titled men. Then this for the lower rank and then the other one. So here he was still trying to explain, say a lot of things about the cap and, you know. So this particular cap that has a lot of iron on it. Yeah, there are places where you fix the... um chicken feather or whatever it's called so you fix the chicken feather on it this also is a cap um i think the people i normally see that wear this cap are people guinea people that sound the guinea i don't know so um moving forward this is the eom of the palace and she does not wear anything on her chest she leaves her chest be at all times i was shocked to hear this because i don't understand why anybody would leave her ch chest be and he was explaining here that this is actually an old woman a titled woman and she joins in the decision making in the palace so yeah um we're moving over to the next section here this is the next section of the museum but this is where i'll be stopping for this video because like i said earlier i do not want this video to be too long so i'll continue in my next upload so thank you so much for watching this video thank you thank you if you like it give it a thumbs up share with your friends share with your followers share with your loved ones share with your enemies and i'll see you guys in my next one